Just waiting for Nate here. We'll be on in a second. Are we recording? Oh, we've done the clap. It's official. It's, well, the audio and video is now synced. And we are in a new location. Oh, no, wait. We've shot here before. <coughs> One second. Okay. Episode 14. <coughs> I don't know, man. You're the one that doesn't want to put numbers on the episodes, so I'm so lost. <laughs> can't even count. I keep trying to tell Nate, let's number all the podcasts, and the titles don't even have enough room. <laughs> I'm just the weirdest theories. <laughs> long They're titles. great. <laughs> long, no, all caps long titles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck. It's funny, because a lot of people can't even see the rest of the caption, it or the title. So fired up. There's so many it's talking so, points but, that happen in the podcast that I want to talk like. I want people to know is being talked about. Yeah. No, I think it's great. Your theory is insane. Because I was trying to like shorten them and make them look like like not all caps because uh, I was watching other podcasts. And Nate's like, no, we're different than them. That's, we go all that's, caps. That's it. Max out the letters on the titles. Yep. Because you to, to me, this is the thing with the podcast or any content nowadays. So many channels, so many podcasts, they're all becoming copycat, replicated versions. Put them on the assembly line, print them out in a factory. They're all the same. And when you see the same thing, the same curated setup, I feel like you're like, these guys are just going to talk about the same things. They're going to talk about you know, how they're so wisdomatic and they're working on <laughs> being self, self-centered and this and, and I'm giving rid of my old desires. And I'm like, no, yeah. that's not it. That's not it. You guys are doing do your do your self mental work you need to do, but like to me, <laughs> I'm like, bro, it doesn't seem that hard to like not put all that time and energy into something to just get out of the house, live your life, work out, have fun with your friends, yeah, drink all night if that's gonna be a hell of time. <laughs> like, don't don't stress on am I doing everything right to be Oops. mentally okay? But I'm, I get for some people, it's a lot harder. Depression is real. We're not saying it's not real, but yeah, this whole trend is just uh, it, it like hit YouTube two years ago. I felt like where everyone was like, "Oh my God, I'm gonna get my morning routine wired, and I'm gonna drink lemon juice, and I'm gonna wake up and do 18 ice baths before eight o'clock, <laughs> yeah. and then I'm gonna take on the day, and I'm gonna eat shit for eight years and be a billionaire in two, like." <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah it's just it's just like people are following what goes viral and what gets views yeah. and it seems to be like at least it seems like yours is but mine is too like all motivational quotes the same quotes from just different people copying each other and then the same like get rich business hacks like yeah oh buy this apartment complex in north dakota rent out every room live in the bathroom <laughs> yeah. on an hoa fee for a year eat shit and like you're gonna be wealthy i'm like i mean maybe that worked for the person but i like yeah. doubt the people that are saying everything out there are actually yeah doing what they say it's fun it's just the internet like ev- fads come and fads go like that's it right now sure. it's i guess it is in a, a bit of a cooler point like motivation and trying to stay healthy but it is getting like a little old to me. What happens is a couple good things come out with great points, things you can take into your life. Hey, this works for me. This doesn't. Yeah. It's not like a rule book you have to follow. Like, I'm going to adopt this and I'm going to discard that. Yeah. But what happened is because it was really interesting in the beginning, I think, people were like tuned in a lot. Yeah. People saw the views. They didn't care about like they just all looked at look at the views on that and look at what he said. I'm going to take that. I don't even know what this guy was talking about. I just know what he said. I don't know the science behind it or any of that. And I'm just going to replicate that on my channel and hope to get the views. I'm going to spout about (laughs) health and wellness and ice baths and running and doing these supplements and the morning routine and sunning your butthole in the morning. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) The the trends were crazy crazy to me. Like It was just so laughable. It's like there is a few people that started it that like, practice what they preach you know and like Mm -hmm. that's why they got cool and like that's they motivated a lot of people but now it's just like all about the views like what's getting views like they're not practicing what they preach most of them one of the channels like that is blowing up in the last few years that actually is on that type of stuff but it's just backed by pure science he's like um he's like a harvard studied neurology and the brain and everything and 
all it knows everything you can know about the human body, what supplement you take, what it does, and it's Andrew Huberman. Yes. And everyone knows yeah. about him now because he blew up on YouTube and stuff, but his stuff is actually sick because he says something and he says, okay, here's the scientific background of what's actually happening. This is why it's happening, and this is why it would work. Yeah. And you're like, that's sick. That makes sense. Like he's not just throwing out some copycat line that he heard somewhere else. Like he's actually backing and studying and doing the research to back the stuff he says. Yeah, that guy. I I've, I've been following him for a little bit now, and he's like, anytime something pops up, it's never just like, this is correct and this isn't. It's always like this is correct because of like all these facts and clinical studies. Yep. Like we did these studies with a thousand people or like a hundred people. And mm -hmm. this is like the results that came back. Like he, uh, he said something about, uh, I just saw it today. Actually, it was pretty crazy about cannabis and in young males. I mean, I, w I definitely shouldn't be speaking about these talk topics, but it's just something he said, like the, the weed is so strong now, I guess that it's when younger males in particular, for some reason, have a lot of it, like in their early, late teens, early 20s, they can develop like schizophrenia later in life. Yeah. And it's irreversible. That was what he ended with. He's like, it was irreversible. I saw that same thing. I was tripping on it. I was like, what? I mean, me and you don't smoke weed, but yeah. we did for a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. that's crazy. Like now, we, we never saw anything when we were kids like that, knowing like no. that could be a possibility. So. Totally. It was like the, the warnings about weed were far different than, you know, it was just like, oh, yeah. like, like you you never do anything you'll lose your motivate this and that but then he's like no you're gonna stunt your growth you're gonna throw off your biochemistry you're yeah. gonna suppress your testosterone and you could possibly develop bipolar or schizophrenia <laughs> yeah if someone told me that i'd be like no nope. <laughs> like, okay i understand <laughs> now, now i'm not it, boss yeah now i'm, I'm not, not doing it. That. that sounds scary yeah my favorite thing back to the topic of people just like posting motivational stuff or whatever I think my favorite thing right now to see is like these channels or whatever. I feel like we're hating a lot right now, but it's just, we're just talking shit. Yeah. But a lot of people are like, you got to get off your phone. You got to get off like Wi-Fi, disconnect, go into nature. And then they'll do it while filming everything with their iPhone, with their iPhone or cameras like we have here set up, film themselves, breathe ice bath and being detached from everything trying to get views on top of it to post it on their <laughs> iPhones on Instagram for views. I, it, the whole thing is so backward, man. It's so funny. I just, it honestly just brings me humor, but I'm like, wait for the, <laughs> up at it. I crack up. I'm like, everything you just said it's is contradicting. You're a living contradiction Yeah. to say, get off your phone, get out into nature while you're running through the forest filming yourself with your phone. You're like, wait a second. <laughs> it's like, I mean, there's definitely a disconnect here. If you're disconnecting, it's from reality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're delusional. <laughs> that, that's, that's my favorite thing on the internet right now. Yeah. What, that, what we just watched was pretty funny too. Just before I watched this podcast, Nate pulled up some really funny a YouTube video from William some, Powerfish, this <laughs> Australian YouTuber. Dude, this guy goes and like sets up like boats. I only saw a couple of videos, but uh, he like sets up these boats on the side of the road waiting for someone to steal them. And he sleep, he like lays in the <laughs> boat waiting for someone with raw chicken. And then as <laughs> soon as he calls them, <laughs> as soon as someone steals the boat. He just starts throwing raw chicken at them. It's and so the one good. guy crashes his car He's into a so tree. He's so freaked out by getting hit in the head. A literal <laughs> full raw chicken bouncing off the top of his head. I wonder if he like kind of knocked him out a little <laughs> he bit. He drives straight <laughs> into the tree. He drives straight into the tree. Powerfish, if you see it, we're big fans. <clears throat> I'm, a, I'm a new fan. I just saw two videos today. Yeah, the Australians, are their, their humor and their wit, it's something that comes along with just like their accent and the way they speak. It's just all time. It's so funny. I spent three weeks over in, in Australia and was just jumping around a ton and just met some new friends and hung with old friends. And I just was like, I was just having the best laughs the whole time. And the waves were firing. Yeah. Where I, I mean, I saw it. I'm sure everyone watching or listening to this saw it too. Where was like, what was the highlight of your Australia run? It was just interesting. There was like, so usually during like Margaret River 
Pro runs. Um, John's competing in that. And for years now, I've gone and met up with him because yeah. in Western Australia, it's similar to North Shore in a way of just that there's a lot of waves in a small area. Yeah. A lot of really sick waves. You're his good luck charm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, at least won that contest so many times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I like to think of myself like that. <laughs> yeah. And so I go over there and usually um, because they so rarely run at the box, if main breaks good, like the box yeah. is firing and I'll go post up and score uh, while they're all doing the contest. But this year I flew in and um, met my buddy Kip Caddy in Sydney and I was going to go on my way to West Oz and he was like, hey, we woke up that morning. And he's like, dude, this wave that just hasn't broken in like years is going off. Oh, my God. Yeah, that I saw that right when you got to Australia. It's like a bodyboard. Like the bodyboarders hold it down. Um, it's been known as a bodyboard wave, but people surf it. Like Kip surfs it and there's other surfers that, yeah. that kill it out there. Um, but I just woke up. I'd never even heard of this wave. It's called Shark Island. And I'm like, well, we're in Australia. Shark Island. That sounds... Um, terrifying fitting and they're like no no, no it's, a, it's like a something in the way the land shape or whatever it's oh like, What's sure like yeah <laughs> sure well oh sure. yeah i had something to say about this and that's really funny uh, along those lines um anyway the way was like just day one of the trip couldn't believe it rolling in everyone was cool in the water all these groms were out early morning had an epic session or all sharing waves um and the slab was heavy it was like a pretty sick entry for a surfboard but the end bowl is real heavy. It goes near dry, sucks out. And I had been in Hawaii since I broke my back. And so I hadn't like, I'd surf secret right a little bit, no waves of consequence really. Um, so just like yeah. getting back on and just being like, oh, I'm back 100% yeah. like, was super gratifying. Score of the way. But while I'm out there, I look over and we're, it's like this big bay and there's like 20 people open ocean swimming. And I'm like, I look around, I'm like, is this normal? Like, this in is in like, Western Australia. This is in Sydney, but all oh. of Australia is well known for giant gray white sharks. Yeah, the, and like, I think just a few months ago, we watched a crazy viral video of a guy getting eaten off. The fisherman was filming him, and, and a 20 foot gray white was eating him. Wait, I, I didn't see this video. I, I don't want I don't want to see it. It's really bad. It's, it's scary. It's just like terrifying because yeah. it's, just, it's just what you think. It's a human being, like, and, and the, size of the great white when it comes next to his body you're just like oh my gosh it kind of makes you prehistoric think like, creatures you might tell yourself like i'll fight this thing off but when when i no, saw like, when i saw this no. size of it i was like it's up it's up to the shark whether it's like there to eat you or there to test you if it's testing you you might live if it's there to eat you like i don't think you're getting away from this thing yeah like we're think of it think of what it eats right it eats seals and then are you gonna Imagine yourself in a swim race with a seal. It's impossible. <laughs> no. You're gonna you're gonna lose every time. And they these things hunt and kill seals. No, we're we're in we're in their house. Like they yeah. So they, it, it's there's terrifying. no match. There's no match. And there's 20 people open ocean swimming. And I'm looking. I'm like, is this normal? These guys are just open ocean swimming, and they're like, they do it every day. Every day. Just training. Just swimming out in the bay. And I'm like, they don't. Is there buoys? No. I'm like, no, like, no, the sharks hang out, hang out by like the headland. Oh like, my God. Bro, yeah, no. right. They're no. delusional. Yeah. I was just like, oh man, that is I, so hectic to do that. You couldn't pay me. Cause my, no, nah, that's what so I said. Sydney's must be a little nearer South, right? I forgot. I don't know why I, I can't. Yeah. I don't know either. Okay. Well, I know it's, it's all just sharky, but one of my, my only, my first and only time to South Oz to um remember we went oh, a yeah. long time ago yeah and we we're surfing this random wave i don't even remember the name but was it the day before like a giant pod of bottlenose dolphins just came up on us yeah and they, i thought there were sharks at first like oh just great white shark like, you go to a gas station there's it's just like a massive 15 foot stuff great white shark literally like just everywhere so it's just like embedded in your brain you see a fin pop up and luckily that one was a dolphin or that whole pod was a dolphin. But then the next day, oh my God. we watched that huge great white out, like, I don't know, a couple football fields directly out from where we we're surfing, just breach, came like four feet straight out of the water. It was insane. We were, because you, you, like, for those listening, when we're sitting in the water, we're facing out to sea. We're not facing land because we're waiting for sets to come. Sets are like the, the next 
um, bigger waves that are coming in in between them is low. So we're always watching and scanning the ocean <laughs> outside, looking for large waves coming because that's going to be the set. That's what we're going to ride. That's what we're, we're taking turns waiting for. So our vision is out. And just all of us blatantly, like, just not that far away, like, a giant <laughs> white belly, black back, vertical breach, great white, just... It was almost like surreal and fake looking the way it came vertically out of the water and then just straight back down. Yeah. Like it didn't like flop crazy. It just went like, boom. And we were like, what the hell was that? It, it took me a second to like panic. Like I remember watching it just being like, oh my, that's, that's a great white shark. It's like, yeah. It's outside of the water. Yeah. In the middle of the ocean. And like that means it's hunting. Yeah. And it took me like three seconds to be like, okay, I have to go in. Yeah. And we just all booked it in paddling as fast as we could but i think um the day before it was almost scary with the dolphins because they popped up only one popped up at mm -hmm. first and it was like a thousand pound bottlenose dolphin which is huge and i've never been that huge. close to a that big of a dolphin before and i thought my life was over because yeah. it looked like it was coming at us and then its buddies popped up yeah i was like oh my heart was like sank. <laughs> I thought I'm like, a oh, grunt noise. Death. I was like, like, oh, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh god, I'm gonna get bit. <laughs> it's over. I'm already dead. <laughs> I'm gonna fight this thing. Yeah, <laughs> dude. That, but that was a that was the only time I think I've ever seen a great white. But yeah, Oz is it's spooky down there. It's super spooky, and and yeah, Western Australia is even more so. There's been there's been a tactic. Obviously, we put ourselves at risk. We're out. We're going in the water and. Yeah, maybe you could. That's the oven if you want to press a button, Jack. I think Mahina showed up too. You can tell her, like, oh. we can cut stuff out. Oh, did she just go in the room? Oh, I think she... she. Oh, I don't know. Oh, it's all good. Anyway, um, yeah, Western Australia is a little more rural, a little more country, similar to where we were when we saw that other one. And there's like these big uh, salmon frenzies that happen. And so they come in and feed. And that's the thing, though. We're in their playground. We're out there to surf and we're in we're in their zone so that's totally on us and we'd never like blame a shark or get furious at them for being there you know that's their zone so we always have that re mutual respect for the ocean and what lives inside of it yeah but um speaking of Big, uh, speaking of scary things in the water i go from that session to western australia fly overnight literally 24 hours in sydney and on in west Oz the next day boxes Huge, it's a wave there, just to the, the right of uh, Margaret River. Paddle out, and it's just pumping. John came out, and so I uh, was soaked to surf with him. We catching a few waves. I go in this wave and get airdrop and get lipped going in. Oh, and, no. and I'm like, you know, like you just like, when you get a few fun ones at a heavy slab, you start to like, you just forget that it's a heavy slab. Yeah, you kind of get comfortable and relax. Yeah, you get comfortable, and I, and I felt that way. And then yeah. I fall, and I'm going over the falls. I'm like, oh, it's all good in the hood. I'm going to just cruise right over. <laughs> all of a sudden, it, like I land, and it's violent uh, in the turbulence. And I'm like, oh, man, no control in my spinning. Yeah. Picked up again, and I'm coming down. And <laughs> I land on a coral head, like one of the most terrifying <laughs> falls I've ever had. And my the bones are still bruised in my butt. I landed like <laughs> on my butt on a coral head, like. Like it was <laughs> on the hole. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. my like, God. And luckily, like my legs were up, man. Like I landed on it so hard at the same time, a side <laughs> turbulence like brushed me off, but it thumped off. <laughs> and I just made this like horrible noise underwater. I was like, oh, you just let go <laughs> all your oxygen. Yeah. I laid in the channel for 30 minutes. No. And, and just, just like the whole, this, like you can imagine, and the worst feeling ever well, and worst we, case scenario it was so funny how quickly i went from so fired up i'll go on anything out here it's not that big to <laughs> to absolutely put in my place terrified for my life feeling in my wetsuit was ripped john's like what are you doing you're not catching waves i'm like bro <laughs> like i can't talk I've right been now. violated <laughs> <laughs> i've been taught a very severe <laughs> lesson today <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want any more. You're like, I got too comfortable. Yeah. And it like b bruised the bones of my butt. And oh my so, God. I, you're, sounds like you're lucky to yeah, be I able to walk really away. Lucky. Totally. And so quick, quick, um, snap back to reality on just respecting the, 
the shallowness and the heaviness of those little waves that can happen at any time. Yeah, it's funny how, like, a lot of injuries mainly happen in smaller waves, no matter where you are. Like, the big day in Tahiti, when we were just in Tahiti, I don't think anyone got really hurt at all. But the day before, the day was rising. Perfect example. Our good friend Tom Lowe from Europe got slammed on the reef and broke like six ribs, had to go into like emergency surgery. Yeah, I called him when I got home and it would actually be a really cool, I think he'd be fired up. Maybe we can video podcast him. There's that site I told you about. Oh, Get yeah, his yeah. full breakdown of it because he just told me a brief tale of, of how and what had happened. But basically he, just like you're saying on the small day, he falls, jumps over the falls. It's all good. He's totally at ease. It's the small day. Yeah. He goes over the falls and said it kind of escalated like, oh, I'm, I'm falling. And um, he just went straight over the falls and straight to the bottom, he said, and slammed like, I was like, did you know right away if you were injured? And he was like, I knew right away it was horrendous. Like I hit really hard and he's like, I felt things happen. Oh, and I was like oh man, like this is real, like okay, no panic, like get back on your board. He got washed over into the lagoon uh -huh. and there was, a, there was boats out there, but that's the thing, right, is like the next wave comes, someone else goes, like no one paid attention. Yeah. He washed into the lagoon and he said he tried a oh. wave, but he just, his, he had broken six ribs and his scapula. And, oh my and God. And no one saw Damn. him wave and he was like, oh man, someone will come in, like, I'm going to rest here on my board, he said. And he put his head on his board, and he was just drifting. I don't know how long went by, but he said no one came. And he's like, okay, it's on me. And so, like, in Tahiti, the wave is, it's in this, there's these huge lagoons. And what would you say that distance is from the inside of the reef of Chopes to the beach? Maybe half a mile? Yeah, or half a mile, maybe over. Maybe a little over. <laughs> That was pretty far. A kilometer brew. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so he paddles in on his own. And he said it was just, he was just extreme pain. He had no other choice. No choice. He, he's like, I've got to get to the beach. Got to get to the beach. I can't wait for anyone. Like, this is bad. Like, something's, he said he couldn't breathe properly. I bet. Couldn't inhale air with uh, his ribs shattered. And they little, cut his organs up, right? Did he know? Yeah. It was like, so no, I guess his um, lungs were okay. If it, it had breached his lung, he would have died, I think, probably in the lagoon because he would, the blood would have filled his lungs. But oh, the ribs breaking God. themselves tore up the tissues around them, it sounded like, and it, yeah. his body was filling with blood. He gets to the beach. The ambulance is on the other side of the river. He, with the help of two guys, walks over the bridge, gets in the ambulance, goes to the Terraval Hospital, and he said... Just random chance out of luck. No one was speaking English. He gets to Terra Hospital and there was one doctor there that spoke English, looked at him and was like, oh my, you are messed up really bad. And they x-rayed him or something? Him. Yeah. And so if he had taken the ambulance from Terraval to Papieri, the main town, they're pretty sure he would have died. He would have bled out. But they med would him. And Jesus. He said that he was like, they're getting loaded in the, hel in, in the helicopter, and the captain's smoking. And he's like, yeah, first time in a helicopter, man. And so Tom said he's looking at the guy like, you, you, you just, thank you for talking to me, but like, I'm in no place to talk. Like, in his head, because he said he couldn't even respond, but he was just like, I'm, I I'm touch and go here. I and can't, I can't imagine. Yeah, thank God he fucking he's pulled alive. it off. He pulled it off, and he's on the men. He was walking around when I called him. This is like, obviously, like a week later, but... They did emergency surgery. They drained the blood and then gave him more blood. Um, and he was all fired up because he's like, I got Tahitian blood in me now. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. It's all time. He's such a positive human. Yeah, he's, he's so a legend. funny. He's a legend. I can't. Yeah, it's just I'm so glad he's okay and alive because me too. I heard that. I couldn't. I was like in disbelief yeah. like that something. That's how crazy the ocean can be because you think it's these massive days mm -hmm. that like will hurt people or people are, are severely injured, which it does happen, but majority of the time, it's it's a lot of the smaller days. Yeah. So you just always have to... It's as soon as you let your guard down with the ocean, I feel like. That's it. Is when you can get injured because you get so used to just surfing like, oh, the sandbar, 
all day it's small and mellow which is like normal and then next thing you know oh you just like rolled your ankle or your knee or like cracked a rib mm -hmm. and there's like, like so there's a saying here in hawaii and maybe it's elsewhere too but it's like we were always told never turn your back on the ocean never yeah and it's it's meant like literally as well as figuratively of like never like you said get relaxed or turn your attention away or, or think you've got it all yeah. under control in the ocean because the ocean is always going to overpower you at some point but also like never look away and from your surroundings and stuff because as soon as you do that's when it happens yeah seriously it it has that invisible power that a lot of people who aren't used to it cuz say you just someone just gets here from even just the mainland who's been in the ocean a couple of times in like California or or something there's this like invisible power here especially on north shore yeah there's so much energy even in still water you don't you could not see a wave and like say somewhere like Aukai, mm -hmm. the sandbar right next to pipeline is a perfect example because the sand drops off to super deep to where you can't touch yeah during the summer it goes from like knee deep waist deep and then all of a sudden it's like six feet deep yeah seven feet deep and you're underwater and there's these intense like currents that are always moving along the shore like mm -hmm. For someone like us, we're fine because we're so used to and grew up here and surf for a living. But being such a huge tourist destination, you see tourists all the time just get caught in what looks like nothing, but they're like in pure panic, like in yep. still water, and mm -hmm. they're getting sucked around, sucked under, and like nearly drowning. And it's, they are drowning. Yeah, they, die they, know they are. Yeah, they fully die. Yeah. Right? and it you would think like, oh, that's a person that doesn't. They're not physically fit. You know, no, I've seen guys like. I've seen like military guys, big crew come down, cakey shore break. Woo, we're jumping in. Yeah. These guys are like super fit dudes, instantly realize their mistake and like they're being rescued. They're being pulled out. They underestimated yeah. it and the power of it. And the thing is, too, is like the harder you fight it, yeah. the more exhausted you get. <laughs> it's such a weird thing of like being real aware of like, okay, I got to get out of here, but I also got to just not spend all my energy fighting it because I'm just powerless like yeah. i gotta let it take me in hopefully yeah a set can last forever but people don't realize that and so they come in underestimate it and end up getting absolutely cooked but that's yeah. why we have some of the most badass lifeguards in the world they literally Straight do up, yeah. thousands of rescues a year i wonder what the numbers are on how many rescues a year we should be we should try to pull that up jack be such a good guest and we uh, get rick on here Oh my God, our boy Rick Williams. Rick Williams. What a legend. We have so many lifeguards we could interview. Yeah. As we, we were just down in last year. We did a group trip to uh, Mexico. We were down at Barra hanging out. Um, we randomly sick. see our friend and super long time, like full career lifeguard from North Shore out there. And it was just this funny paradox because they're, we're out having a hell time. He's having a good time. And then, like, there's just. Honestly, some of the biggest kooks I've ever seen happening to be <laughs> surfing as well. Like, they just, I don't know where they learned their surf etiquette, but like, <laughs> for just a basic example, like, if you're going down the wave, you have limited options, right? You can yeah. either, you can only really go one direction at a point break, and that's down the face of the wave. But if you're paddling back out, you don't have the right of way. You get out of the guy's <laughs> way that's uh, on the wave. Yeah. You can go in, you can go out. You can just move like laterally. You can like get out of the way. You can put yourself in the white water and get a little duck dive hold down, a little beat down, and get out of his way. Yeah. But people, I saw them doing it in front of you, me, Rick, Aaron, <laughs> throwing their boards, scratching to get into the face of the wave where the only line you have to go is very near them. And I'm like, you you don't have to right away here. Like, and some it's crazy. I saw you on a wave literally go. Get out of the way! Like, <laughs> yell at someone who was just like jamming to what looked like purposely get in your line. Yeah, dude. People, I was talking to Pizel about this. John Pizel, our shaper. He's probably not gonna want me to tell people about this because I was like, we gotta get you on. Save this for the podcast because he was going off about people just like not like surf etiquette has yeah. changed mm -hmm. even since we were kids. You know, yeah, it's changed globally for for the worse. It's not getting better. Yeah. Because, like, when we grew up, you you, uh, you get out of the way. Like, if you have someone coming down the line, you go into the impact zone if you have to yeah. to stay out of their way mm -hmm. because that's 
something that's part of like surf etiquette. Yeah. Or like say you're at not your home spot and there's locals out. Mm-hmm. When you think it's your turn, it's still not your turn. Yeah. Whether that's applies for us when we go places or people that come here. I think that was his line. He's like, when you think it's your turn, it's still not your turn. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's perfect because people now are like, oh, I, they've been surfing for a little bit and they're like, oh, well, it's it's my turn now when it's like they're at some new spot or something. And it's like, no, it's it's never your turn when you I've come. I've seen them just take the I'm deeper, so it's my turn rule to the to the extreme. Like, that's the hard rule. Like, just yeah. because they end up on the other side, like, even though they just caught a wave, that is their turn to go. But there's so many intricacies. intricacies? That's the word? I don't <laughs> know. You're, the, you're the word, I went you're the word guy. I, I, I might you're have the book that, but, um There is. And we'll make it up. We'll like, make it up. Everywhere we go, we respect the locals of that given location. Yeah, like, like Tahiti, where we just were. Hey, you're the guy here. Pal around me 10 times. Like, that's, I get it. You're trying to hold down your spot. But Tahiti's a little different because we have been going there for 20 years and we have our level yeah. of respect too. But any new spot and then any newcomer there is like, you just give way to the locals. And I saw this in the comments um, talking about, or maybe it was on my YouTube. This is, we're, we're going off on a big rant here, but the guy was tripping that about the localism thing. And he was like, oh. localism is the lamest thing. And, and I can't even believe what you said that CT, CT surfers, you won't let them get waves at pipe and this and that. And, and I was just like, wow, like you just, he was tripping on why anyone thinks they can be a local at any one spot. Yeah, it's crazy. And, I, I put out a whole YouTube video on localism. I tried to explain it. Oh, he needs to watch the video. Yeah, I mean, we can link the video on the, in the description on YouTube, but I was just saying all this stuff like, hey, this is just how surfing works and it's how it's always worked. It's not like nothing against you yeah. or the people like, I, it's, it, it's so strange that people don't, they, they feel offended maybe and they feel like, oh, I'm, it's my turn because I've been waiting. I'm a surfer. Yeah. And I'm here to catch waves. Like, I get I get their view, but it's just different. I, d- I don't get it. Like I mean, I think like they're confused on the part of like that person has spent their entire life at that spot, and they feel they have a priority to it. In which in surfing they yeah. do, yeah. But they feel like no, like, I just started surfing. And I I thought we're all taking turns every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. If everyone's new so. and surfing a new spot together, everyone's taking turns. Mm-hmm. We've done that at spots when no one else has been out. And it's just our crew on a strike mission. Think, um, perfect example, Panama Silverbacks. There was no oh, locals yeah. out, right? Yeah. They're all taking turns. Yeah, and everyone if, takes if turns. If someone who was on a different program than ours, not with our group, comes out, everyone's in rotation. Like, yeah. But if there was a local out there and he wants to get a few waves in a row, like, bro, you hold down the spot, go. Yeah, I... Like, that- it's, I feel like it's a lost thing. It's yeah. becoming a lost thing. It's Maybe it's because surfing is becoming so popular. Yeah, it's being mass adopted. Well, and then people just feel very entitled to like, why shouldn't I get that wave? Yeah, and I think and they, they're not, they don't grow it, up used to like It feels that. like a sensitive subject here in Hawaii, but they don't realize when we're talking about it, like that's everywhere else in the world. It's at yeah. every big major spot. Think of Snapper Rocks. You're going to have Dingo and Mick and all those guys, Parco, yeah. <laughs> holding that spot down. Uh, right? Dingo doesn't burn guys out there. <laughs> <laughs> really? yeah. Oh, we got to get Dingo on the podcast. Yeah. I was just talking to him. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's the same everywhere, yeah. like you're saying. And um, so, yeah, that was a big rant. But back to our boy Rick, the lifeguard. Um, he had some incident with somebody in the water. And not that they would have known, but they were like calling him a kook and like, They're like, you're going to fix my board after they literally threw their board in front of his line. I remember that. And he was just real down on it. And he's like, man, I've been coming here for so so long. I used to surf with the tiniest crowd out here. And now I'm getting yelled at by some young guy. And it's just like. Who wasn't even from there. Yeah. And it was, he was, he was real down. And I'm just looking and I'm like, none of these people even know. Like this dude has saved, literally saved the lives of thousands of people in his life i mean i've i want to know the numbers like we, we must have him, the numbers we were like well we asked him on the beach we we're like rick do you think you've saved over a thousand lives and he's like yeah oh for sure a yeah. thousand i'm claiming like 
maybe 10,000. Like he dedicated his life to protecting people in the ocean. On the North Shore where people get swept out every single day. Like think about how many rescues he maybe did Mm -hmm. a day in the winter at Pipe. Maybe three. (laughs) A day. Just boom, boom, boom. Three. Three lives saved. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, and then some days, maybe like five. And literally to the point where he's an expert in like resuscitating someone. Like yeah, they're life unconscious savers. Unconscious people. Yeah. He's bringing them back to life. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm like, these guys are just giving him the hardest time. Like, I know. Not that they're going to know, but it's just like you never really know who you're talking to, right? Yeah, you never know someone's story. Everyone has a story. Yeah. Uh, we, we need to get Rick on just here. That would be epic to hear like when he first started lifeguarding, like real green at the job yeah what it was like what pipe was like what the crowd was like at that time localism back then yeah we get my dad on for that one yeah talk about <laughs> localism mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Be big time <laughs> that'd be a good video <laughs> <laughs> you'd love that <laughs> oh man rick the legend okay what's up Go. question here from who it is from parker alwood parker alwood Parker Allwood. Uh, where do you guys want to go if you have not been yet? I don't even want to tell Nate. Because he's going to go there without me. <laughs> I want to go to Chile. Uh, the, the, que- the question was, where do, you, do we want to go that we haven't been yet? Yeah. And I said, I don't want to tell Nate. But. Go on to keep I want to go to Chile. <laughs> I've never been to Chile, and I just feel like there's tons of sick waves there. I've been to Chile. Chile. It's super sick. Oh, you've been there? Yeah. Oh, you've been to this other place too. I want to go. I want to go to New Zealand. New Zealand's sick. I want to go to two of those places. I'll tell you where I want to go. Japan. For those crazy... Remember that wave John got a super long time ago? I'm going next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. Are you? Oh, my God. That would be all time. I, like, I don't care. I'm coming. I'm, I'll drop everything I have to do. I'm going to Japan. <laughs> Uh, yeah, barrel. No, yeah, I remember it just that right. Seems so sick, like because mm-hmm. Japan in general, like I spent a little bit of time there because we opened some sunrise shacks. Yeah, and it's just such an awesome, fun, like interesting place. And it's not third world; it doesn't feel like so. It's like clean, and yep. you're not really worried about like the typical like third world stuff, like tap water or robbings or like that kind of thing. You got the but, three things we talked about, I think, in our first podcast, or maybe it was a second. What's that? Good food, good waves. And I think it was good people or good, nice places to stay. With yeah, nice two. places to stay. Maybe. You have those three things and you're on for a good surf trip. Yeah. that's. I've been wanting to go there since I saw John's part. Crazy. And I've heard there's like crazy waves everywhere. But I don't know if that wave, fun. unless it's gotten that good and it just wasn't filmed, but that wave just seemed like such the freak incident. Yeah. Was that wave you surfed in Australia, Shark Island, does that get good a lot or is that like a freak thing too? That, from what I was told, was that it was like it hadn't been that good in a few years. So really, it, it looked a little like bit rare, insane. Yeah, really fun wave. I'd like to go there too. Yeah. Damn. The thing is, like, traveling and a lot of these places, like everything seems so done. For me, I want to go, and it's so good to surf waves you haven't surfed. But then there's like people that surf them, right? And you still have to deal with them. I still believe there's coastlines out there that are unexplored, unsurfed. You're going to find a heavy wave. There's going to be no one around. And like that, that to me is slowly becoming more of like the dream of what I would really like to do. Yeah. I think um, there is so many undiscovered places. These locations we're talking about, Ko wants Japan. I want New Zealand and Chile. You guys are from those spots and you know of waves. And maybe they're, they're real heavy waves and no one's surfing them yet. Let us know. We'll come expose them. We'll come. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We'll keep it secret if they got to be secret. <laughs> We're going to check them out. So give us an explanation to what happened on your face there. Oh, yeah. We just talked about this in the other one, too. I know. I saw a comment that was like, don't talk about sunscreen if you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. They're but go on. on our yeah. What, what happened there? So I have a blister on my lip and a, and a thing on my cheek. And crazy because we just came through this whole conversation in one of the last podcasts about sun cancer and sunscreen. And uh, before I was leaving on the trip that I just went on, 
I had meant to get checked. I hadn't been checked in a few years. I went into the doctor, told him, I'm pretty worried. I'm in the sun all the time. And he was like, okay, let's look. I had like a, so this is what I had in case you guys might have something similar. All my freckles and sunspots, he kind of was like, ah, oh, that's not really it. Like, but yours could be, so I would just get checked. But he like glazed over that. But what he was real worried about was the scab that doesn't heal. And that's kind of what I had. I had this little scab on my lip, like, and I was like, oh, it's a dry spot. Peeled it off and I had the mm. same thing on my cheek. Go on, go on, go on. <laughs> same go on. thing on my cheek. Okay. <laughs> okay. And uh, I would like rub it off and then it would come back. And this went on for like probably yeah. far too long. I should have gotten checked. But it was like a year. And I'm like, okay, obviously this isn't like a cut that's going to heal. Like it's, it's here to stay and it keeps coming back and it kind of was changing. As soon as I showed him the thing there and on my cheek, he was like, oh, man, yeah, we're burning that off. And he didn't say it was like, so when they're real tripped out, I think they cut it out and they biopsy it. And so they get it checked if it's cancerous. Yeah. And then they really check the rest of your body because if you had it somewhere, you might have it another place. And um, this, he was like, oh, that's like pre-cancerous. Um, so left unattended, it would definitely get there to something like, I don't know. He, he, there was a couple different names, but melanoma or turn into one of those bad cancers that yeah. obviously if those get below your skin you can be in a really bad place so he just froze them um and now they're blistered up and peeling and look really weird but i feel a lot better now that i've gotten looked at damn that's scary I, yeah. I think i need to go get checked too but i've never had anything like the non-healing yeah scab i think jack or probably behind the camera I think you have something like that. <clears throat> you might want to go get checked for that because that's kind of scary. Yeah. The scab that never heals is that he was pretty much like, if you have one of those, come in. The scab that never heals. Oh, <laughs> what's the, what's the, um, the guy from, what's it called? Uh, Austin Powers? Scab guy. <laughs> oh, yuck, dude. <laughs> Disgusting. Where he eats his scabs. <laughs> yeah, I can't let uh, like some oh, yeah, taste. <laughs> All time. What an amazing movie. This isn't really a question, but there's just a <clears> about. Jack's asking us another question from the YouTube comments. So so who's this from? Oh, just a bunch of comments asking if we're going to get a podcast studio. Yeah. Nate, you want to take it away here? Because uh, yeah, we've we talked, talked about, about this a bunch. right in the beginning. Um, we might at some point right now, we're just on the cruise program. We're keeping it very casual. We've literally been doing our podcast in spots that we normally have our like chill conversations at. And so that's yeah. what like, you guys are literally a part of. Like, of course, we uh, do big explanations because things we may take for granted, we want to help explain to you guys something you might find really interesting. We don't want to skip over, you know, and things like that are instinctive to us. We want to help get the point across. But we do have been doing the podcast in locations that just feel like we're sitting down and having a chat. And it feels like some of you guys appreciate it and have realized it is like you feel like you're part of that chat. And that's what we wanted to take you to. It's, it's so interesting because yeah. people are, Paul Gomez told me this a long time ago. He was like, all the pro servers right now are so like um, hard to relate with, right? Every interview is the same. Everything is like, there's no connect between the fans. But I feel like with the yeah. YouTube channels, we've, we've connected and made that gap. And then with links like this, the podcast even more so. Yeah. Is certain things that happen to us happen to everyone in surfing. And so it's relatable. We have got to transfer the knowledge we have that you don't have over. You can learn from this. Yeah. But also just be a part of what we do on a daily basis. Yeah. Like we just literally would probably be doing the same thing right now in Nate's living room. And the last podcast we did with Eli was in my living room. Yeah. So the whole podcast studio thing is we were thinking about getting like a full studio setup, but honestly it's like super easy to set these mics up and just sit yeah. down with us and someone and just talk. I think the casual approach is honestly like more sustainable, honestly for us. And clearly yeah. the fan, like the people watching and I mean, listening and watching seem to like it. So you guys subscribe to the podcast and may, we can keep pushing these things out in our living rooms. Yep. That's it. We'll keep it casual. We'll keep we'll stri stray away from the corporate curated corporate <laughs> teleprompters. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I guess we'll just wrap it up. We're at forty-five minutes here. Yeah, so. we could wrap this one up. 
We got another one coming. Oh wait, will that one have? That been one out? might have launched. Okay, already. I think so our our, after our last podcast will be drinking beers live. With oh everyone. no, that's coming up. I think. Oh, announce, well, the, announce the idea right now on this one. I think this one's gonna drop after, or should we put this one out like tomorrow or something? Oh, because it'll be live and we'll announce that. Mm-hmm. Or we can wait a weekend. Either way, so, tell them the uh, idea just in case they miss this one we do and they'll be ready for the next one. Okay, so our idea is, I think a lot of podcasters have done this before, like Joe Rogan and Bert and Tom. But uh, we're going to, me, Nate, and Eli are going to sit down with a ton of beers, maybe a 30 rack each so we can see how much Eli actually drinks. <laughs> and we're going <laughs> to we're gonna make you like a little live event. We're going to do a live podcast with us three and I'm sure other people will be around to jump in. And we'll just drink beers with you guys. If you guys want to log on and drink beers with us, we'll do a live event on YouTube. A hangout booze cruise. Yeah, so be sure to turn on our notifications when we do these. We'll probably post about them in our like little YouTube chats or on the comments and stuff. So that I think that'll be a really fun way to connect with everyone because there's a live chat as well. The live chat's going to be huge. So even yeah. if you guys don't drink, tune in with your freaking bubbly water and um, get in that chat. And uh, be we'll be responding to questions. <laughs> um, Rouse, we'll be getting hammered. Whatever. whatever. I'm it sure there'll be lots r- of talking points <laughs> happening in the live. We could get canceled. <laughs> it's easy to do nowadays. Yeah, I know. It's so easy. <laughs> Everyone's very sensitive. Yeah. So with that, we're signing off. That's it, you guys. Another podcast in the books. See ya.